Kornati, a group of scarcely populated islands halfway up the Croatian coastline in their rugged natural beauty are an earthly paradise. But the temporary settlements testify to what life was like for those who now live on other islands or on the mainland, but still have property on the Kornati Islands. The survival of generations of Kornati people in this drought-ridden place was possible thanks to calloused hands from the shovel, the sail and the oar. They were in a constant battle with the sea, which in a split second can show its stormy, foamy, troublesome face. Not even the arid soil had any mercy on them. Through the centuries, they eked out meagre fruits from their toil in the constant battle for survival. Upon their arrival on the Adriatic coast over 13 centuries ago, the Croats accepted Christianity from the natives there, inheriting their devotion to Mary. So it was on Christian foundations that this conjoined life of these two peoples took place. Love for the Mother of God and love for the homeland welded them together. Born was a people of fierce warriors and defenders of Christendom, yet with a deep and affectionate devotion to Mary, the Mother of God. Eighty-year-old Kresimir Skracic from Murter Kornati is a fisherman and a boatmaker. He remembers the harsh conditions of life in the world of the island as well. It was risky sailing or rowing between the islands. A storm could blow up. You could get caught in the Buria wind or with the Yugo. We put all our trust in God's help. We were so poor, we were asking for our daily bread. It's only in hard times that man realizes that he can't make it on his own. He calls out, Mother. He seeks refuge in her embrace. That's why this forsaken island on the first Sunday of July every year is full of people. They too were spurred on the strength of their faith. These island people are sailing into the embrace of their mother, Queen of the Sea, Our Lady of Tarats. Here on the Kornati Islands, in this rocky desert, in quiet remoteness from the rest of the world, the mother awaits them. They are coming here full of hope. It happened like this. I sent my four daughters to Zagreb, where they studied to the highest level. Living in poor conditions, I decided to make a promise to Our Lady that I would make a door for the church 
if they completed their studies. And that's how it was. And nobody can say to me, that Our Lady didn't help me. Love for Our Lady has existed in the hearts of Croats for almost 1400 years. The first artistic impressions showed the image of the Mother of God. It was found in Biskupia near Knin city. The Croatian king Zvonimir in 1078 saw the completion of the Church of St. Mary's as his gift and the gift of his people for Mary, Queen of Croats. In it, on the stone gable, is an ancient ideal of female beauty, the mother of Croatians, the mother of the kingdom. Pope John Paul II blessed the precious Tegurium during the pilgrimage of Croats to Rome in 1979, calling it the Croatian Pilgrim Gospel. It is a symbol of Croatian history, faith and community, which reminds Croatian Catholics of their identity and urges them to faithfulness to their baptismal vows. Father Petar Lubina is a Mariologist and regular member of the International Papal Marian Academy and secretary to the Croatian Marian Institute. The Croats proved themselves to be particularly strong devotees of the Blessed Virgin Mary. You could say that our history and that devotion went hand in hand. When the pressure increased, when misery was endured, when we were weak, oppressed, suffering, when Turkish aggression increased, when communism's pressure intensified, that faith rooted in the heart became livelier and stronger. Variation of forms of the same love towards the Mother of God is to be found wherever Croats live. The same faith and the same trust can be seen in these pilgrims as they make their way to Visovac, to Our Lady of the Angels. This walk has continued over the centuries. It is impressed in the hearts and memories of the people from the time when the border was constantly changing and when the Ottoman Empire was at times gaining and at times losing territory. It was an age when the only real security was a sharp sword in the hands of the men and a rosary in the hands of the mothers. And the mother on this island is the mother of all mothers. Here on the island of silence, one feels peace and the mystery of the centuries. Here in the embrace of the mother, with her help, one can forgive oneself and everyone else. One can seek comfort in harmony with the world, in peace with God and man. And there, in humility, you perceive the state of your own soul. You can reach your own heart. You can recognize your own weaknesses and appreciate the loving mercy of God. University professor Marko Rodocic looks back on his own first pilgrimage. I remember how, as a child of about 12 years of age, I came on foot here to Visovac with my mother. It's about 30 kilometers. It would take us two days. This is where we would sleep, or up there on the hill, or at Visovac itself. We would carry out the ritual and then in the afternoon we went back. It was a spiritual treat. You would experience a spiritual thirst for God, for heaven. To see Visovac, that for me as a boy was a huge experience.
Visovats leaves nobody untouched. Zrinka Kolusic, a student of economics from Zagreb, testifies. The island of Visovac is a special place, a special oasis, where you can find comfort, you can pray, you can calm down and find inner peace on all levels. In the Sacrament of Reconciliation, we can detect the mystery of the shrine and feel the strength of heavenly grace, a breath of heaven. Everywhere around you people open up, and when you open your soul, the heart is touched and prayer wells up. Prayer means an awful lot to me. Prayer to Our Lady and prayer in general. I can find comfort and peace when life gets hard and people let you down. Today, the world is full of people who will disappoint you, who one day are your best friends and tomorrow they are gone. I always find comfort in prayer and that's why prayer means so much to me. Together with their Franciscan caretakers, the island and Our Lady of the Angels have lived through a rocky, stormy past. While Croatia was constantly oppressed under different assailants or stricken with poverty, sickness and hunger, the clergy on the island never stopped offering spiritual and material help to their people. Visovac and Our Lady of Visovac over the ages for the people here symbolized survival both of the faith and of the Croatian people. I think that without the Franciscans and without the faith, they would neither be Croats nor Croatia. A mother is always love, unselfish, giving, care. From now on and forever, and the mother of God, the mother of heaven, is an example of love, faith and trust. Prayers and intercession to the mother, to her heart, are said with the same trust from everywhere on the globe. The heart of every man knows the strength of a mother's love. Croatians are no exception. They are in their own way a bead in that rosary that links the prayers of the whole world and every human being. Halfway up the Croatian coastline, Rogoznica can be found. There lies an image which lives, which tells its own tale. The night before the great Rogoznica celebration, Maria Medic, one of the villagers has difficulty in expressing what Our Lady means. Our Lady means everything to me. She always watched over us. When the Italians attacked Primoshten, Krapany and the surrounding areas, we weren't touched. And even in the recent War of Independence, enemy ships came right up to our bay, but they sailed away. 
That's a sign that she watched over us and defended us. When anything goes wrong, I don't even call my mother, rather, Our Lady of the Chapel. Not just me, but all my children, our whole town and the surrounding area. They say that the image was found by a fisherman by the name of Ivan Bogavcic Tumburko on the rocks of the peninsula of Gradina. The residents of the place had it put in the parish church, but it miraculously returned to the Rogoznica rocks. Then the villagers decided to raise a chapel on the site of its finding. Today, on the first Sunday of July every year, the people of Rogoznica make a procession both by sea and by land, in honor of the Mother of God. When my baby ended up in the hospital, my mother went to the shrine on her knees, up to the chapel. A mass was being held. I too went barefoot, but she went on her knees. Right from the start, this image became a place where the tired and the overburdened came with their petitions and presented their needs. Hope and trust were renewed in the daily life of the people of Rogoznica because many petitions were granted and their prayers were heard. The island of Korchula, famous for its great explorer and adventurer Marco Polo, is situated on the southern part of the Croatian Adriatic. It is an island with a strong testimony of its Christian character. It is proud of its traditions and what it has handed down. Stanka Kraljevic tells us of one. On our island, we have many, many churches and chapels, over 150. And, of course, in every one, the Mother of God is honored. The miraculous lady of the island saved our island on the Feast of the Assumption on the 15th August 1571. The Turkish Navy came here under the command of Oros Aliya, the Vice-King of Algiers. In August, it is summer, the weather is beautiful and the sea is always calm. But on that day a huge storm arose and the Turks were forced to retreat. They had to leave our waters or they would have lost their whole fleet. We believed and we believe to this day that it was Our Lady who miraculously saved the island. And that's why we call her the Miraculous Lady of the Island. The Brotherhood of Mary celebrates Mary in a special way, but all the people participate in Marian celebrations in processions. They walk in honor of her. It is to her that they pray in the Angelus, in the Rosary, in the May and October devotions. They pray her litany and they keep the tradition of the first Saturdays. They honor her particularly during Lent with the Croatian hymn Gospin Plac, or Lament of the Blessed Mother. It can be heard throughout Croatia and in Bosnia-Herzegovina. 
But there are also other laments touching on the theme of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. In this they unite with her in sorrow, preparing for his glorious Easter resurrection. Corciula celebrates and part of that celebration is the presentation of the Moreshka dance, which recalls the saving of a slave girl from the hands of the Turks. That slave girl represents none other than Corciula itself, or Croatia. Mary, the mother of God, is the shield of the Croatian people, their advocate. Did God give any other people a corner of the world as beautiful as our own? He settled us at the crossroads of cultures and worlds between East and West. Didn't all our neighbours in the past and right up to the present day try to take part of our beautiful homeland? Didn't the Turks from the end of the 14th century, for 400 years, lay siege to our beautiful homeland? And a people who have been trampled upon by the boots of others, with a yoke on their backs, to whom will they go? To the mother. That's why particularly the Turkish part of our history, in those parts of Croatia, which were Turkish strongholds, there is a special love for the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the proof of this are these Marian shrines. The first baptism of a Croat took place in the river Yadro, on its banks, not far from the sea, on land that records centuries of Croatian history, young people now prepare to go on a walking pilgrimage from the shrine of Solin to the shrine of Sinj. In the 10th century, on the island of Solin, the mother of the kingdom, Queen Jelena, said to be the mother of all orphans and widows, and a strong believer in the intercession of the mother of God, sought the construction of the Church of St. Mary's. The island of Queen Yelena soon became the island of Our Lady, the island of the Heavenly Mother, which will forever preserve memories which are the source of much hope. Vieran Toric, a member of the Solon Youth Prayer Group, is also here tonight to honor Our Lady. I'm grateful to God that I was fortunate enough to be born and to have grown up here in Solin. This is the place where my ancestors offered their faithfulness to God through the hands of Mary. So for me personally, being on foot here is not a sacrifice, but rather just a small expression of my love. I think it's important to reveal love, not just in spoken words, in privacy, but by witnessing to it in public life too. And this walk in honour is a testimony of my faith. This unusual pilgrimage starts at Solin. It begins with confession, mass, a complete spiritual preparation for the road to Sin. And that nourishment will be of use. It feeds every step of the way, which is a prayer. Mary is not just a tradition that links me with my ancestors, but rather she's a true woman, 
a mother who gives the hope for all of my life that it's worthwhile to live completely for Christ. One of the pilgrims here is the journalist Yasminka Peric. This pilgrimage is a walk together with Our Lady, towards Our Lady. For me, this is something really majestic. I think that everyone who tries it feels an immeasurable joy and a sense of fulfillment, because it's only in sacrifice and renunciation, in those little beads of sweat, that everything receives its full sense and nothing is meaningless. I think Our Lady appreciates sincerity and devotion of the heart and that there is no sacrifice that goes unnoticed with her. Tired legs are longing for rest, but their hearts draw them on step by step until tired bodies arrive. Christ is the way, the truth and the life. His mother is the road to our hearts and our hearts become the road to a better world. I can testify that my people really could, through all 14 centuries of history, and today too, they can recognize that maternal love. They know how to run to her and seek that maternal love, protection and help. In 1687, in the face of Turkish invasion, the Franciscans from Rama fled with their parishioners to the area of Tsetina. They brought their greatest treasure with them, the image of the miraculous lady. Just as the folk singer and fiddler Müller Kralina sings, the Turks came upon Sinj in 1715. About 700 men fought fiercely to hold off the Turkish attacks. The Turks managed to set parts of the city alight with their cannons, but on the 14th of August, the final onslaught began. While the Croat forces tried to hold off the attack from the Ottoman assault, the Franciscans with the elderly woman and the children knelt before the image of Our Lady of Grace. The blessed image was placed on the altar of St. Barbara in the church of St. Michael in the fortress of Sinj, and they prayed to be released from the hands of the Turks. And as a last hope, they carried the image out on the ramparts. The Turkish army first of all lost their strength and later retreated.
The shrine of Our Lady of Sin was repeatedly destroyed, burnt, left in ruins, although only once by a natural disaster, an earthquake, but all other times by man's inhumanity to man. For example, the last time in 1944, it was bombed and everything was destroyed except the image of the miraculous Mother of God, the Mother of Grace. In honor of Our Lady, in remembrance of the victory over the Turks, for centuries now the nightly games are held, the Knights of Sin contests. It is not only the oral tradition that speaks of this heritage, there are also written testimonies of that mixture of strong love for Mary and a heroic willingness to defend their land and faith from the onslaught of powerful enemies. One track from the Kiev folios in the 12th century shows the devotion that the people had towards the Mother of God and their faith in her intercession. Defend, O Lord, the sons of your peace-loving servants, and we who trust in the intercession of Blessed Mary, grant us security from all our enemies. It was in 1579 that Pope Leo X granted the Croats recognition of a completely unusual kind. In gratitude for their persistent defense of territory in the face of Ottoman aggression, in his encyclical he addressed them as the bulwark of Christianity. It cost the Croatians many lives, as well as destruction of property on a daily basis. Often only relics of relics were left of the past. They had no one to turn to except the Mother of Heaven, the Mother of Grace, the Queen of Croatians. Since the 7th century, when the Croatian people came to settle on the Adriatic coast, not only did the devotion to the Blessed Mother begin, but that's when a distinct Croatian history begins, because with its conversion to Christianity, it entered the sphere of European peoples. That's why it is right to say that the moment the first drop of water poured from the Yadra River over the forehead of the first Croat, in which he was reborn, and became a child of God. This was also the moment when he began to honor the Mother of God. The Turks in the 16th century, in their military coups, in three separate attacks, destroyed and burned this church and the Remet monastery here on the slopes of Medvednica above Zagreb. In 1721, the Croatian parliament agreed to renovate the shrine. At that time, the head of the monastery also sat in Parliament with the noblemen, because the advocates of Croatians from Remete is patroness of Croatian government. It is from that time that this known Croatian prayer comes. Most faithful intercessor, at our threshold stand, watch over our holy faith and Croatian land. With specific sentiment and emotion, the body of the faithful honor this miraculous statue of the Merciful Mother. The Croatian national identity is one that is intertwined with love for the Blessed Virgin Mary. It has a decidedly Marian character. That's why you never find a church without an altar dedicated to her, or at least an image, in Croatia. It is difficult to find a parish which covers a few chapels in which at least one of them is not dedicated to her. Father Karlo Balic at one point says that the Marian shrines were the hearths that warmed our ancestors. When it was cold, you had nothing to heat you. You would have frozen to death. 
Well, there, you just went to the Blessed Mother and she would heat you up close to Jesus and together with Jesus. That's how the faith protected us. Throughout Croatia and Bosnia-Herzegovina, there is also a mention of the miraculous Mother of God. But wherever you go on pilgrimage, whether it is Almas, Rama, Trsat or Olovo, you will hear stories of the immeasurable love and grace that is granted at the intercession of the Heavenly Mother. Despite the agony of the last war, the gratitude of the Croatian soldiers can be seen at this Marian shrine. They humbly come to thank the one who was their defender and in whose intercession they had complete faith. Ante Barac, one of the pilgrims on the military pilgrimage to Our Lady in Maria Bistrica, a participator in the war for independence, first of all in Croatia and then in his native Bosnia and Herzegovina, says. I was in the war from its very beginnings, from 1991. I never went with the aim of killing anyone, but I felt the need to defend my family, my homeland, my faith and my people. When it was hardest, I would take the rosary in my hand and it was easier. I wasn't alone. Personally, faith is everything to me. I think anyone who is without faith is incomplete. In order to be who I am, I have to believe in something and have an objective in my life. Without faith, I wouldn't know what to live for. I believe in God and my family. My objective is to show my son the right way to live, so that when he grows up, he can have his own family, to whom he can pass on Christian values, which I planted in him. Thank you, Mr. 
One people throughout the centuries believed in the intercession of the Mother of God. It was to her that they went. They prayed for her to intercede for them, to her son and to the whole world. And in their love they believed in the intimacy and the closeness of their relationship with the Heavenly Mother. And now on their own homeland, they can demonstrate the love of that mother for every man. They can recognize that same love and that same faith in different peoples of the world in every human heart. Medjugorje is a new beginning. From here, Our Lady's message goes out to all the world. And as always, her children are responding to her call. <laughs>